the moon swatch blue moon. Sometimes I even surprise myself. Hi last watchers, back in March I published a video explaining why I wouldn't be buying the Moonswatch Moonshine, a watch that many considered to be a bit of a cash grab, as it came a year after the launch of the somewhat controversial plastic, sorry, bioceramic Moonswatch collection. As it turns out the Moonshine was released only a matter of days after I finally managed to pick up my own mission to the moon, and although I've had hands on and reviewed several of the Moonswatch variants, the mission to the moon was the only one, excusing the Neptune, that I really wanted to own, and paying a premium for the same watch with a gold-plated chronograph hand didn't really appeal to me. That may well change. The moonshine is unique, or should I say was unique, in that it is not deemed as part of the original 11 Moon Swatch collection. It stood alone with a gold-plated chronograph hand that is smelted every month during a magical full moon with the watch being sold during the next full moon. The proof of this is borne out with the official full moon production certificate that you get with your moonshine. Regardless of my own personal opinions, my March video also gives some buying advice for those of you looking to own the moonshine, with a listing of days when it might be produced and available for sale, and even what time you should get to the limited stores. Early, very early. Now they say hindsight is a wonderful thing, but so is foresight, as there were two points in my video that would now seem to be uncanny predictions. So much so that I either have the ability to prophesize the future, or swatch watch my video and thought, hey, that's a good idea. Firstly, for going a few caveats, I suggested that the best month to buy a moonshine would be August, as it would have not one, but two full moons, one on the 2nd of August and the other on the 31st. Before you start shouting at me about the 30th of August, it would seem that Swatch are using EDT, Eastern Daylight Time, and not UTC, Coordinated Universal Time, when it comes to the full moon release dates. I live and learn. On reflection, the most striking part of my March review was a casual and somewhat flippant comment at the very end of the video, where I say, the Moonshine release shows that Swatch are obviously looking to capitalise on the success of their original Moon Swatches, and although that gold may add value to the watch, I would have preferred they spent the money on a sapphire crystal. I'm sure its launch is just the next iteration of what will be many more Moon Swatches, in a similar way that Omega keep churning out a never-ending variant of the Speedmaster. I'm already looking forward to the Wolf or Blue Moon, you can imagine my surprise when I heard about the Blue Moon release, with yet more queues outside Swatch stores on the 30th of August, with wannabe collectors hoping to pick up the new Moon Swatch. I wonder how many watches were available, and what percentage of those queuing actually got one. As it stands, the Blue Moon may actually turn out to be the rarest of Moon Swatches, and possibly the best investment, as the watch is only available during a Blue Moon, the next of which won't be until January and March of 2037, which pretty much guarantees its scarcity, and therefore its desirability, to potential owners and collectors. It also helps that in this instance, the gold chronograph hand has been fitted to the Blue Case Neptune, Courtesy of a production issue with the blue dye, the original Neptune was withdrawn from sale soon after its launch and only went back on sale at the end of last year, after it was seen on the wrist of former James Bond, Daniel Craig. I've been visiting the Swatch store in Edinburgh on almost a weekly basis, hoping to get the Neptune for a fellow watch collector. It's a full-on task, and I'm speaking from experience when I tell you they are extremely hard to come by. Whereas the rest of the collection now seems freely available, the Neptune remains elusive, with barely a handful of deliveries this year, and watches in single digits being made available. It will be interesting to know whether Swatch ramped up production of the Neptune case for the Blue Moon release, as this will have a knock-on effect either way with future availability of the original Neptune. Inevitably, the rarity of the Blue Moon has resulted in crazy resale prices, with the watch already being listed by scalpers at anywhere up to £2,500. Good luck to you. 
With the suggestion online that the Blue Moon is a one-off limited release, most eBay buyers seem happy to pay double the £250 retail price tag, splashing out around £500 to secure the watch, which could turn out to be a bit of a bargain. However, knowing how the Moonswatch production run works could give a glimmer of hope to those of you still looking to bag a blue moon at retail. Now please take the following information with a pinch of moon dust and maybe wishing a star that it comes to fruition. With the benefit of a listing on eBay, you can see that the gold used on the blue moon chronograph hand was smelted during the first moon on August the 1st. Using that as an example, it's fair to surmise that Swatch smelted more gold during the Super Blue Moon on the 30th of August. This would allow them to release further legitimate Blue Moon dated watches during the next full moon on the 29th of September. Now there's no guarantee as technically the September full moon will be a harvest moon and releasing further Blue Moons might look like a further cash grab from Swatch. In any case, we will know if I'm right in a month's time. I'll take it on the chin if I'm wrong. The Blue Moon wasn't my first watch prediction. I suggested back in June of 2021 that Seiko should release a new version of their long-forgotten 6105-8000, something they did a year later in June 2022 with their 1968 reinterpretation lineup of the Slim Turtles. I'm currently two for two. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to see if I can come up with a third. In the interim, if you're a fan of the Moon Swatch, let me know what full moon variant you'd like to see next. My money is on a Blood Moon version of the Mission to Mars in March 2025. You heard it here first. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.